Tonight at 10 with gas prices at an all-time high. We've got the tips on how to best budget your money. Hear all about it in just a minute. But first, we've got to take a look at your weather. After a rather calm day, thunderstorms have shaken the Ohio Valley. Our area has been under a variety of weather warnings tonight. Thank you for joining us for 7 News at 10. I'm Steve Moore. And I'm Aliyah Keller. Here's a live look over the Highlands where things do look to be a little bit rainy right now. But how much longer will this rain last? Let's send it on over to Chief Meteorologist Zach Petty to find out. Zach. Yeah, plenty of active weather going on early on this evening. The good news is all of the severe weather headlines have expired, although the tornado watch is still expected to stick around up until about 1 a.m. Thursday morning. Here's a live look at what we've noticed, at least a loop over the last two hours across our viewing area. And again, we had plenty of weather to talk about severe thunderstorm warnings. We also had active tornado warnings going off and on over the last two plus hours. The good news is most of the rain has wrapped up. It does look like we do have a severe thunderstorm warning that will likely clip northern Jefferson County and northern Hancock County here in the next couple of minutes, if not extending through the hour. But most of the rain starting to wrap up and stay sub severe. Now I'll continue to progress and to track what we can expect to see through the overnight period, but an updated look at a calmer pattern for your weekend in just minutes. But for now, we'll send it back over to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Zach. Wheeling police are investigating a breaking and entering incident that led to a shots fired incident in South Wheeling earlier this afternoon. Now officers were called to 37th Street around 250 for a report of a man that was trying to break into the back of a residence. Police were notified that another individual confronted the suspect by firing a single gunshot. The suspect then fled and was last seen running south on Jacob Street. No one was injured. The suspect has been described as a clean shaven white male with light colored hair, about six foot tall and 20 to 30 years old. He was wearing a tan shirt and dark pants at the time. If you have any info, you can call police at 304-234-3664. West Virginians are crossing their fingers for some relief on high gas prices, but they will not be getting a tax holiday after all. The governor had entertained the idea, but then changed his mind. Yeah, with gas prices finally hitting the $5 per gallon mark in the Mountain State, I spoke to legislators about what they have to say. As high gas prices chip away at our wallets, many are turning to our legislators for a solution. At one point, Governor Jim Justice thought about suspending the state's 35.7 cents a gallon gas tax for at least one month. But when it came to calling a special session of the legislator next week, the governor said no. From the standpoint of a gas tax holiday, there's no point in you calling me. I mean... Really and truly, we know exactly now where the majority stands, and the majority says they're not interested. Governor Jim Justice calls a special session for a gas tax holiday dead and a total waste of time. He also says it would cost taxpayer money, but others disagree. Well, we're very disappointed because this is something uh, on a low level, on a very small level, we can do to help the people of West Virginia who need help in paying for their gasoline now that it's approaching five dollars a gallon across the region. We're trying to have tax breaks for West Virginians who are struggling now during this gas crisis and it's falling on deaf ears and I find it to be sad. At the same time, Governor Justice says the Biden administration is to blame for the high gas prices, not West Virginia. But Delegate Sean Fluharty says something still needs to be done at the state level. I feel like we have a duty and obligation as legislators in a time of crisis to act and the response that we're given from the governor and from legislative leadership is that they're not going to act. They have no intention of acting at a time when the average West Virginian is struggling and needs all the help we can give them during this crisis. Flu Hardy believes the governor has the authority to do something regardless of how much support the proposal has because West Virginia is under a state of emergency. He claims the governor is just choosing not to. Governor Justice says the gas tax holiday would cost West Virginia $35 million a month and says that money would be better spent on road repair and maintenance. Well, you might have thought it couldn't happen, but it did. The price of gasoline starting to eclipse the $5 mark, and that means some tough budget decisions are going to have to be made. And while you can't change the price per gallon, financial experts say you can offset it by taking a hard look at where your money is going and cutting out the expenses that just aren't 
isn't necessary. 7 News reporter Colin Roos spoke to a financial expert today about some corners you may have not realized you may have not realized you can cut. Meet Devante. He lives in Wheeling but drives an hour to his job near Pittsburgh every day and gas is hitting him hard. I'm filling up about two times a week and it's uh, running me about $100 a week. He says his 12 gallon tank used to cost him only about 60 to 80 to fill up every week, but now that expense is more than doubled and it's making him think about working from home or even relocating. That's uh, about $200 out of my paycheck every week, so it, it takes a toll on the, on the monies. <laughs> Devontae is facing a dilemma that millions across the country are struggling with. What used to be a manageable cost to commute to the workplace is now becoming a burden that's difficult to bear. So what's the key to balancing your budget and getting from point A to point B? It lies in what's called the discretionary dollar. It's what you might call disposable income, the funds that you can afford to let go of if you need to. Naturally, you don't want to take away from, you know, what you're spending on food, what you're spending on rent. Those are the most important things. And there's no easy way to say it. That's going to mean a few more nights eating in. For example, Starbucks every day, you know, or, you know, going out to eat or, you know, different things like that. Going to the movies, you know. Right now, we're just hitting peak season, so don't expect things to get any easier for the summer. But he says prices will probably begin to cool down along with the weather around September but just a little bit. Well, I say a little bit. I mean, if it's, you know, that time it's 550, maybe it gets to 450. The bottom line is that gas can't skyrocket forever, but we'll have to sacrifice a little bit while we're along for the ride to make that eventual drop even better. Reporting in Wheeling, I'm Colin Roos, working for you. Colin thinks Haswell defines the peak season for gasoline as 4th of July until the kids go back to school. So if you're planning your summer expenses, Unfortunately, the craziest prices are yet to come. Looking across the mountain state tonight, where we've learned that the man accused of killing Charleston police officer Cassie Johnson will not be taking the stand in his own defense. Today, Joshua Phillips' defense presented two witnesses, including a Charleston firefighter and a general surgeon, both speaking to Phillips' condition after the altercation with Officer Johnson. The state presented testimony from the surgeon who treated Johnson after the shooting. The state also showed the jury dozens of photos from the crime scene, including pieces of Johnson's damaged badge, as well as parts of her bloody uniform. The state plans to call more witnesses to the stand tomorrow, so stay with 7 News for updates. Check this out. Wheeling officials are working to improve city housing here in the friendly city. Melissa Adams is Wheeling's homeless liaison, and since she started this position in November, she's been searching for a solution. At this week's city council meeting, she filled the members in on a new idea that's popping up across the county. Life hubs help individuals experiencing homelessness get back on their feet. Adam says that Wheeling is filled with wonderful resources, but this project would bring all of those organizations into one place. You know, when you're living on the street and you daily are focusing on when you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, how you're going to you know, provide for your basic needs, it's very hard to think about long-term goals and future plans and what you can offer to society. So I believe that with having this Life Hub, giving people the opportunity to have a place where they can rest and be healthy, that we will see a significant change within our community. She says a Life Hub is opening in Pittsburgh, and that would be their model for the Friendly Cities Hub. The Pittsburgh Life Hub is estimated at a being a $20 million project, but Adam says that Wheeling's would most likely be less expensive and funded through donations, fundraisers, and partnerships. She says that Life Hubs could really help decrease crime in the city, drug and alcohol addiction, and tidy up the appearance of Wheeling. Check this out. Belmont County is getting a new dog park. Sheriff Dave Lucas is spearheading that effort. He says it will be located on Route 331 in a large field behind the current Belmont County Health Department near the walking trail. He says whenever he and his wife travel, they take their dogs, Loki and Izzy, to dog parks, and he decided that Belmont County needs one. He approached the county commissioners, and they officially approved it today. Uh, it'll be one big fence area divided to where you have a uh, one area for small to medium dogs, the other one from medium to large dogs. There'll be water there, there'll be pavilions there for shade, so it'll be very nice for uh, uh, owners to bring their dog to run, to exercise. He says it will open next year at no cost to the taxpayers. If anyone has any suggestions, ideas, or donations, they can call the sheriff at 740 695-7933 and leave a message. 7 News will have more on this later in the near future.
We also have a traffic update that you need to be aware of tonight. Until further notice, the Market Street Bridge located near Center Wheeling is closed after an overnight fire underneath the span caused structural damage. According to Wheeling Police, around 11.30 Tuesday night, the Wheeling Fire Department was called to the bridge after a homeless encampment caught fire. The West Virginia Division of Highways will perform an inspection, but until then, drivers can use the Main Street or Chaplin Street bridges as a detour. Well, the old saying is an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but experts say seeing the doctor regularly is the real solution to a healthier life. WV Medicine Wheeling Hospital held a health fair at Family Service of the Upper Ohio Valley today. There were several screenings available as well as endless health information. I took advantage of the variety of screening they had and got my blood pressure checked. The CEO of Family Services says that we have says we have great medical resources here in the valley that many people don't know about. The biggest focus is trying to get people back out into the community and then the other thing is is to make sure you do realize that preventive maintenance is the best thing when you come to your health to make sure you get out those appointments and then you know the other thing is is we have community partners here that will be able to explain their services which is you know sometimes a lifesaver. They also had educational information on skin cancer, diabetes, and more. If you missed out on today's fair, their next scheduled event is on October 12th from 10 to 2. It's free and will take place at the Family Services Building near Center Market. The 11th annual Blues for Cure is back at Sally Buffalo Park in Cadiz. Over the years, the event has raised more than $250,000 for the community. The money goes to Harrison County Cancer Crusaders and a WVU Harrison Community Hospital program for cancer related causing and support. This event is completely free to the public thanks to the area businesses like MPLX, who is the primary premier sponsor this year. Great atmosphere, uh, outdoor shows, outdoor music is the best in my opinion. Um, and again, we're going to have some great bands uh, with, uh, with horn sections, so it'll be really fun music, a little different style of blues than they might uh, normally see. The event is June 24th with an acoustic lineup, and the 25th is all bands. If you would like to donate, you can do so on the site. There is also a 50-50 raffle and an auction. Assigned Ben Roethlisberger and Ryan Shazier helmet. There is also a CD people can buy of last year's concert. WTF is honoring high school seniors from around the Ohio Valley this month. Today's senior salute goes to Morgan Denham from St. Clairsville High School. If you'd like to honor a high school senior in your life, just go to WTF.com and click on Senior Salute under the Living Local tab to find out more. Congratulations, Morgan. Well, coming up next, Zach is going to have a full look at our weather forecast. So stay tuned.
Storm Tracker 7 weather is presented by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. You can't get much farther away than quiet to describe the weather across the Ohio Valley this evening. My apologies if my voice is sounding a little hoarse. I had a lot to talk about over the last couple of hours. Now, the good news is most of the severe weather starting to wrap up, especially south of I-70. My attention is now turned to what's going on north of I-70, primarily through northern Jefferson County, extending over into Hancock County. We have a line of showers and potential rumbles of thunder that will continue to shift its way through the northern panhandle and southeastern Ohio region and head over into Beaver County within the next several hours, likely moving through uh, northern Hancock County between 1030 to 1035. And this is all thanks to a pretty complex line of showers and clusters of thunderstorms. The good news is that most of this is finally starting to wrap up even as we turn our attention across central and western Ohio. Just a few lingering showers over towards I-77. Bulk of the severe weather can actually contained over into uh, Hagerstown over towards Garrett's County, Maryland and over towards Preston and Tucker. But for the most part, we're done with active severe weather. Now the threats were a little bit uh, changed, especially compared to where we had earlier today. Uh, wind and heavy rain, of course, were the primary ones. We did have an isolated tornado too. That's why I continue to say, although the threats loads never zero, we actually had three or four. I can't even remember just because it was always just felt like a blur. And now we're talking at uh, 10 17 on uh, your Wednesday evening. We'll have to look at some reconnaissance and look at some of the data and of course work with the National Weather Service out of Pittsburgh to get some updated looks uh, in regards to uh, any potential touchdowns or confirmations. Temperature is much cooler compared to where we were earlier today. Right now we're sitting in the mid to low 60s across the immediate northern panhandle. We maxed out today at 80 degrees for our daytime high. Nice warm day. Although it's not going to stick around, expect to see a cooler air mass with a return to, uh, generally speaking, westerly flow across the Ohio Valley, staying rather seasonable Friday, Saturday in through Sunday. Highs in the mid to low 70s. I am expecting to see a return of rain for our weekend. Now, in terms of those showers, those should be cleared out by your morning commute. A rather gray and cloudy start to your morning. A pop-up shower, not out of the realm of possibility, late morning into the early afternoon. Uh, right along the I-70 corridor. I don't expect it to be anything too, too widespread. We could even filter in just a little bit of sunshine for a Thursday evening. Although return of rain for your Friday, likely sticking around into your Saturday. A bit more spotty in nature in the morning of Saturday, then a little bit more cloudy skies for our day on Sunday. Chances for rain return by mid next week, but those temperatures likely to soar back into the 80s starting on Monday. In regards to your pollen reports, we got medium to high pollen counts or medium to low pollen counts the next several days. Primary pollens are your oak and grasses. And guys, I'm more so just going to revert to you and talk because I'm kind of done. <laughs> kind of done? Yeah. did kind of quite a bit of that this uh, the well, past uh, three hours or so. so on the, on the Honestly, plus side, I'm going to start calling me. you Iron Man. <laughs> hey, that works. I, I prefer I've never seen a man talk about weather for so yeah. long in one breath. It's impressive, oh legitimately. Man. Yeah, I mean, I prefer to be Captain America. That's just kind of yeah. like that. All I right. feel like that well, suits. I'm already okay. named Steve, so I'm yeah. taking that one. But uh, <laughs> are we out of the woods yet? Yeah. Yeah, most of the weather, I mean, it is starting to wrap up. It's moving into southwestern Pennsylvania for the time being. A lingering shower or two, mm -hmm. uh, still not out of the realm of possibility, but most of the severe weather should be and is wrapping up, although I'm still keeping my eye and attention on that uh, line of showers up into northern Jefferson and Hancock County. but. Immediately area, the immediate area, depending on the nice side, let's just be done with precip for, uh, let's say, like 24 hours. Sounds good. And for all yeah. the people that called about the NBA Finals game, mm -hmm. the score is now 68, Boston, 56, Golden State at halftime. So wow. there you go. You came prepared. <laughs> you came prepared. We got a lot of calls about it. <laughs> hey, we, we, but we weather really is did. important, yeah. and you got to keep Weather is far more important than any yeah. Warriors game. Absolutely. But hey, Ohio Valley, one thing I do want to remind you is to download that Storm Tracker 7 app. It literally gives you the latest in weather information there at your fingertips at all times of the day. Although whenever we do have severe weather like tornado warnings, it is our requirement and our priority to keep everyone safe across the Ohio Valley, so would not change it uh, for anything. You can also tune into our radio partners. That's WKKX, Watchdog Network on 1600 AM, and the Valley's largest radio network, the River Network, at River Talk 1430 AM, 100.9 FM. Guys? Still to come, committee members investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol claim explosive and new info will come to light during hearings tomorrow. Find out all about it when we return on
This is 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News at 10. Members of the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol are promising explosive new info will come to light during tomorrow's primetime public hearings. CBS's Natalie Brand has a preview of what to expect. Nearly one year after a House Select Committee formed to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, the panel will hold a primetime hearing to reveal its findings so far. We're ready to tell the story. The committee says it will present previously unseen material and receive witness testimony. They'll hear from a U.S. Capitol police officer and a filmmaker who documented events around the Capitol that morning. I can say that certainly one of the themes that we will be fleshing out is the, the fact that in advance of the 6th uh, that there was an understanding of the propensity for violence that day. The nine-member select committee is made up of seven Democrats and two Republicans. They have interviewed around 1,000 witnesses and received 140,000 documents in connection with the deadly attack. Five officers lost their lives in relation to January 6th. We owe it to the officers who lost their lives and the officers who were injured uh, to tell that story and to ensure that this never happens again. The committee has also issued dozens of subpoenas, including those to former White House officials and allies of President Trump who were involved in the planning of the rally held at the Ellipse just before the Capitol attack. According to CBS News polling, most Americans, 70 percent, said it's important to find out what happened that day and who was involved. But Republicans are divided on the issue, with most saying they don't want their party to focus on it. This committee is not about seeking the truth. It is a smear campaign against President Donald Trump. Thursday will be just the first of a series of hearings in June to lay out the investigation into what the committee calls a coordinated multi-step effort to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election and prevent the transfer of power. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. Natalie, thanks. CBS News will have coverage of the hearing Thursday beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern. Well, an investigation is underway at a liquefied natural gas terminal in Brazoria County, Texas, after reports of an explosion today. The incident occurred around 11.40 a.m. at the Freeport LNG facility. Police described the incident as, quote, some sort of explosion and said the building was not under any evacuation. Surfside Beach Police Department's Marine Division is assisting Port Freeport Police and the U.S. Coast Guard on the waterways. There have been no reports of anyone injured. British prosecutors say that they have authorized police to charge ex-film producer Harvey Weinstein with two counts of indecent assault against a woman in London back in 1996. After revelations about Weinstein emerged in 2017, British police said they were investigating multiple allegations of sexual assault against Weinstein that reportedly took place between the 1980s and 2015. Unlike many other countries, Britain does not have a statute of limitations for rape or sexual assault. Weinstein is serving a 23-year sentence for rape after his 2020 conviction in New York for offenses against two women. President Biden and Jill Biden will host the ninth Summit of the Americas that brings together governments from across the hemisphere to focus on pressing challenges, including economic prosperity, climate change, the migration crisis, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Vice President Kamala Harris and Doug Emhoff, her husband, are in Los Angeles for the summit. Upon arrival in Los Angeles, President Biden tapped, taped an episode of Jimmy Kimmel, then greeted leaders at the Microsoft Theater and made remarks at the opening ceremony. Coming up next in the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone, Wheeling, One, Wheeling Post One opens their season by hosting Morgantown at I-470. Plus, we'll head back to Pittsburgh for more from Steelers Minicamp and hear from the quarterback.
I do, yes. Hey, by the way, can you let Kurt know that the sports ticker is good to go? Thank you very much. And now, the Sports Zone with Scott Nolte. Hey everyone, this is the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone. Wheeling Post 1 opening their season by hosting Morgantown Post 2 at I-470. On the bottom of the third inning, it's already 2-1 Wheeling. Braden Kupski sends one back off the pitcher. He'll be safe at first. Dylan Gongola will come in to score for Wheeling and Post 1 takes a 3-1 lead over Morgantown. Later though, Morgantown here unable to complete the inning ending double play and Michael Topher would come on in for Wheeling and post one would enjoy a 4-1 lead over Morgantown. But in the top of the fifth, we're now tied at four and post two will take the lead line drive down the right field line. That's going to go all the way into the corner and going to bring home a pair of runs for Morgantown and post two takes a six to four lead here in the bottom of the sixth post one. And the base is loaded, but a great catch at first ends the threat. Morgantown goes on to win 12 to 4. The game was called in the bottom of the seventh inning due to the severe weather in the area. All right, on to the NFL now. Day two of the Steelers minicamp. And of course, the focus continues to be on the quarterback group. Who will win the battle to replace Ben Roethlisberger? Now in March, the Steelers signed free agent quarterback and uh, first former first round pick Mitch Trubisky to a two year contract. And then in April, they selected pick quarterback Kenny Pickett with their first round selection, 20th pick overall. Now as OTAs and minicamp are coming to a close, where do they see themselves on the depth chart? I mean, I'm preparing to be a starter. I, I feel like no matter what position you're in, that's what you should prepare like. So we're all pushing each other. We're all competing every day. Um, like, like you said, I wouldn't read too much into it, but um, it's, I'm, I'm getting a lot of good reps. I feel really comfortable in the offense, so I like where we're at right now, and, I'm, and I feel very confident. Mentor word, I mean, I don't think it's, like I said, it's not his job to just sit there and teach me. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to watch him. It's really my job to ask questions and to learn from him and watch how he does things and how they go about their business. So, yeah, I think there's kind of a fine line between that mentoring thing, but uh, we have a great relationship and I think it's going smoothly. Now Steelers offensive coordinator Matt Canada says that as of right now, Mitch Trubisky is the starter. Mason Rudolph is number two and that Pickett slots in at number three. Uh, check this out. Lindsley senior to be Luca DiLorenzo sure made a big splash at Kentucky's recent football camp playing defense. He made this outstanding one handed interception. That play itself actually appeared on ESPN's top 10 plays as the third best play of the day. He also made a number of other great defensive plays. that are also featured on that highlight reel. I know that head coach B.J. Dupuis is excited to have him back for his senior campaign. All right, now here's Ryan Decker with our Gold and Blue Nation Mountaineer Minute. The Gold and Blue Nation Mountaineer Minute is brought to you by McClure House Hotel. For the first time since their historic run to the Final Four in 2010, Kevin Jones, John Flowers, and Devin Ebanks will share the basketball court in a game this summer. Ebanks is the latest addition to this year's Best Virginia squad. 
Despite this being the first year Ebanks will play in the basketball tournament, he is familiar with Best Virginia. Not only did he play collegiately with Jones and Flowers, of course, but he's crossed paths with other team members while playing pro basketball internationally. He also got some practice work in with Best Virginia last summer. And even though it's been more than a decade since that run to the Final Four, you get these guys together on the court and they're in sync just like old times. I feel like when I come back, we just pick up where we left off um, in terms of chemistry and our relationships. And obviously that translates onto the basketball court. And uh, for the younger guys that I didn't get a chance to play with, you know, but I obviously have a good relationship with them as well and know them. And I know their games. So, um, you know, it, it'll be an easy fit for everybody. Best Virginia's run through the basketball tournament bracket gets started at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center on July 24th. But fans will have the opportunity to see them in action on July 16th in an exhibition game on the Fairmont State Campus. More on eBanks on our website. That's the latest on the Mountaineers here in Morgantown. I'm Ryan Decker. Hi, Ryan. Thanks so much. I'm Scott Nolte, and that's the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone. You're watching 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News at 10. Law enforcement officers in Belmont and Jefferson counties are seeing a disturbing trend. They say that they're seeing a rise in a number of drug impaired drivers on the roads. So both county sheriff's departments are teaming up with the Ohio State Highway Patrol, Martins Ferry Police, Gold Quarry and Turk, and Crossroads Counseling in an initiative to get those drivers off the roads. DK Wright tells us how that will work. Rather than drunk drivers, they're seeing more drugged drivers these days. You know, our officers all carry Narcan in their cars, and it seemed like uh, uh, it's more and more that we're using Narcan out there in the field. They will be intensely watching drivers for drug impairment June 9th through August 28th, and they ask that you help them. Whether you know, you're traveling down the road and you suspect somebody is impaired by drugs or even alcohol, to contact the Highway Patrol Post, you can do that by pound 677 or you can simply dial 911. 
Crossroads Counseling is part of the effort with help for those with substance use disorder. We offer a wide range of, of educational programs as part of our driver's intervention. Um, we also offer a comprehensive screening. Gold Corey and Tourette, the law firm that sponsors Booze Cruise You Lose, is equally passionate about the tragic results of drugged driving. It continues to be a problem and it affects uh, thousands of people's lives, not just those that are uh, impaired or get arrested and, and have the consequences of that, but also those that are injured as a result of the accidents. So to notice and report drug impaired driving, what signs do you look for? Weaving within their lane, uh, erratic speeds, going high speed, slow speed, or even simply pulling off onto the berm and appear to be slumped over at the wheel. They definitely need to contact us. They say the drugs they see most are prescription drugs and illegal narcotics. They say their goal is to prevent crashes that cause injury and deaths. D.K. Wright in Belmont County, 47 News, working for you. Thank you, D.K. The initiative starts tomorrow. It will be in effect Thursdays through Sundays from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. through August 28th. Well, for many students, summer vacation means sleeping in, watching TV, but that break from school can also be used in ways that are both productive and relaxing, making lifelong friendships while having fun in the sun. And the WVU Extension is ready to provide all of that for kids five days in July. They've restarted their 4-H camp for Hancock Brook in Ohio counties and will be packing their bags for Camp Russell at Ogilvy. Campers will build their life skills based on activities they choose, whether that's crafts, sewing, or even robotics. I like a lot of the classes that we have, like uh, we have dancing and crafts and recreational games the kids get to play and shooting sports. There's tons of different activities for everybody. I really like getting to see all my friends because some of them I don't get to see other than at camp. So I'm just excited to do new activities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Ogilvy has actually welcomed 4-Hers since 1937, and Mr. Ogilvy had it on the property even before that. If you're looking to grow your child into a future leader, you can sign them up by calling the Brook or Ohio Extension offices. We have those numbers for you over at WTRF.com. There's a group of women in the Ohio Valley trying to empower women to achieve their career goals, and you can join them. Wild Door Women for Economic Leadership and Development is a national organization, but they have a chapter here in the Upper Ohio Valley, and they'd like more women to join them at the Weld National Leadership Conference that's coming up on June 23rd. The event will give women tools to improve their lives both professionally and personally. Lifting women up and giving them the skills, the connection, the programming to support them wherever they're at is, is imperative if we want to have more women in leadership roles. If you're interested in attending the Weld National Leadership Conference, it will be held on June 23rd. And there are nearly 30 different speakers in session. Uh, attendees can choose the ones that they think will benefit them the most. If you'd like more information, visit weldusa.org. Employers got a chance to learn more about hiring second chance employees this morning. A workforce recovery breakfast was held at West Banco Arena. One man said he struggled with opioid addiction for 20 years but was on parole, but his life turned around and was giving a chance at a job. Now he's an electrical me mechanical apprentice getting his college degree while employed. He says the HR person at his place of employment gave him a chance. It turned into an amazing life that just keeps getting better every day. I'm Went from a low paying job doing something that I wouldn't ask my worst enemy to do to doing something that I loved that I didn't know that I loved it and going to school, getting paid to go to school. My school's getting paid for by my work. We believe in second chances. We believe in not being against people that may have a criminal record or a drug past. So, no, you do not need a fancy degree to get a good job. Those two men work for different companies. They are both recovering from substance use disorder and both are examples of the value of second chance hiring. The first man, David Gorby, now of Wheeling, has an incredible story of victory out of hardship. Check it out on our website, WTF.com. 
Still to come, Brad Pitt's latest outing features him as a determined assassin whose latest job goes off the rails. We'll hear about that and more in your eye on entertainment when we return. This is 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News 10. Brad Pitt wants to take you on a never-ending thrill ride. A documentary series serves up iconic black food and the stories behind it. And the Tribeca Film Festival kicks off with an all-star slate. Here is your Eye on Entertainment report. Jennifer Lopez's new documentary, Halftime, is the headliner tonight at New York's Tribeca Film Festival. My whole life, I've been battled to be heard, to be seen, to be taken seriously. The film, which also debuts on Netflix next week, chronicles Lopez's career and personal life. That's just one of 110 films from 40 countries taking the screen at the festival. Other highlights include Hallelujah, a documentary about the late singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen. The Tribeca Film Festival runs through Sunday, June 19th. Oh, I see what you're doing. Ladybug's supposed to be lucky. Ha. Brad Pitt stars as Ladybug, an unlikely assassin determined to do his job after most of his gigs go off the rails in the action film Bullet Train. I, I gotta get off this train. Ladybug's latest adventure puts him on the world's fastest train, and he has to figure out how to get off. Sandra Bullock co-stars. Bullet Train hits theaters August 5th. You ready? I'm ready. Showtime. And restaurateur and cookbook author Caroline Randall Williams travels the country, uncovering the often untold black stories behind some of America's iconic food and spirits in the new series, Hungry for Answers. I'm exploring the intersections of race, food, and culture. From Nashville hot chicken to Tennessee whiskey, Williams serves up the details about how and where these all-American offerings originated. Viola Davis is the executive producer. Hungry for Answers debuts today on Discovery+. Plus. That's your Ion Entertainment. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, don't go anywhere because we have another full of your forecast. That's coming up next on 7 News at 10.
Storm Tracker 7 weather is presented by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Weather action finally starting to wrap up after a very active Wednesday evening. Now, areas across southeastern Ohio finally starting to see that tornado watch start to expire, and I would not be surprised if within the next several minutes, even if not uh, before 11 o'clock, that the tornado watch across the northern panhandle does expire as well. I was keeping my eye on this cell and line of showers moving in through Beaver County, my old stomping grounds over towards Center Township, Aliquippa, and Manaka. Shout out to all my friends and family up there. This pushed through northern Hancock and Jefferson County earlier on this evening, all thanks to a pretty robust warm front that then shifted its way to the east thanks to this colder air finally starting to infiltrate its way through the area. Looks like a severe thunderstorm morning over towards uh, central and southern Pennsylvania, but our weather finally starting to quiet down. We're also going to notice a little bit of a cooler air mass filter its way in currently sitting in the mid to low 60s across the Panhandle, southeastern Ohio and southwestern Pennsylvania. Near 70 though from Huntington, Charleston, even towards Cincinnati. We max out daytime highs today. We're at around 80 degrees, a couple of degrees above average, but pretty seasonal for early to mid June standards. Normal high sit at 77. Record setting finally broke into the triple digits first time this year and it's June the 7th. It's June 8th. Today's the 8th, I think. I'm not 100% sure. It, it's, been, it's been a long couple of hours for me, let's just put it that way. As you step out the door tomorrow morning, mid to upper 50s is what you'll be waking up to. There could be some pockets of valley fog, so just keep that in the back of your mind as you progress out the door for your Thursday morning commute. And it'll be a little seasonably cool for this time of year. High temperatures in the low 70s. We stay in the low to mid 70s as we transition into your weekend. Chances for rain return both Friday and Saturday. A little bit more widespread Friday afternoon and evening. The good news is this cold front finally advances through and we should stay relatively on the dry side as we progress into the early morning hours of your Thursday. Just gray and cloudy. Although the good news is we could mix in a little bit of filtered sunshine for the second half of your day. An isolated pop up shower or two could make its way into the forecast primarily to the south and west of I-77. I don't necessarily expect it to be anything too, too widespread. And again, we could filter in just a little bit of sunshine for the second half of your Thursday. So we saw high temperatures for the next several days, but uh, sky coverage and rain wise looks like we'll see increasing chances for rain for the afternoon and evening on Friday. Spotty showers for your Saturday. I'm also keeping an eye on some high heat as we transition into the next work week with those temperatures approaching and soaring back into the 80s. Chances for rain by Wednesday. Guys. Coming up, do these chefs have what it takes to bring home the dough? Find out when we return on 7 News.
This is 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News at 10. Pizza Masters from all over America met yesterday to participate in the second edition of the Pan American Pizza Tournament and the 10th Pizza and Panda Championship. Both championships are being held within the framework of the Degusta 2022 Food Expo, where the contestants will compete on stage with 12 ovens in front of 18 judges and 30 members of a jury made up of journalists, chefs, and cooks to choose the best pizza chef on the continent. The championships have a total of 150 competitors from several countries who will make a total of 575 shares. The great Argentine champion will represent Argentina at the 2023 World Pizza Championship in Parma, Italy, and will collect over $8,000 in rewards from sponsors. $8,000 seems a little low for the world's best pizza maker. You would think that it would be higher and more world-renowned just because pizza is like one of those international staples that almost everyone likes. Yeah, you have to, you have, to have like a dietary restriction at this point to not like pizza. Yeah, absolutely. I you know, I, I don't think my sister likes pizza. Well, that is... I think is, that's crazy. I didn't want to say I it, but you I love her. Did. I love her, but yeah, I can't get on board I had a that cousin that never liked pizza either. She was a little, little cuckoo. Really? But I love her. She's great. Um, she always ate the chicken at the pizza restaurant. So it's like, all right, well, now we get to order chicken, so it's kind of win-win for me. And plus, if you get the fries, and get to, like to dip in the buffalo sauce and the ranch, <sighs> it's like sauce. the additional... Oh See, I gosh, never just guys. order pizza. Like, you order pizza, then maybe wings right. or yeah. JoJo's. Like, I've got to have, I've gotta have yeah, two items. Have I'm not Joey work, Tribbiani. All right? I well, yeah, plus you've got to have, you got to carbo load. So if you want the pizza, you also want to get the french fries. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to get a little protein, you know, just uh, if you're pumping the iron or whatever, you can have the chicken. They're high in protein, although it might be a little high in trans fat I, and everything. I love chicken on my pizza. Chicken, a little buffalo, buffalo sauce. Chicken? Oh, so really? good. That's pretty yeah, good. no ranch, it though. Not a good, ranch actually. fan. Even in, like, general, no ranch? Never ranch. Ever. Don't like it. Uh, yeah, I like. I think it's pretty good. You? Oh, I love ranch. ranch I love yeah. ranch. I honestly eat ranch with everything. It's always a two yeah, against big one. Fan, with big fan. Big fan. Pretty so, much. Yeah. Well, that is all the time we have for Seven News at ten. But you can join us in just minutes for more local coverage on Seven News at eleven on CBS and ABC. Make sure you head on over to our website wtrf.com and check us out on social media. Have a great night. Seven News on WTRF has been brought to you by Bordis and Bordis. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy that I can see the monitor on camera and I can't always see the game off like This is 7 News, working for you. You're watching 7 News, working for you.
You're watching 7 News, working for you. Okay. Tonight at 11, the jury that will decide whether to convict Joshua Phillips of murder or not will do so without hearing his account of the shooting that took a Charleston patrolman's life. Y all about it in just moments from now. But first, we of course have to take a look at your weather. After what was a very nice day across the Ohio Valley, thunderstorms rolled in for the evening. Our area this tonight was under a variety of weather warnings. Thank you for joining us for 7 News at 11. I'm Steve Moore. And I'm Leah Keller. Here's a live look over the highlands where things do look to be does look to be a little bit calm at the moment, uh, maybe a little bit rainy. But how much longer will this rain last? Let's send it on over to Chief, Meteor Chief Meteorologist Zach Petty to find out. Zach. Yeah, guys, we've definitely been plagued by countless warnings all across the board, whether it be severe thunderstorm or tornado. Good news is most of that or all of that has expired for our region. Here's a loop of what we've experienced over the last several hours. Again, there were pockets and periods of this evening that had one to two tornado warnings all at once. The good news is as we turn our attention to Storm Tracker 7, dual AG Doppler radar, the immediate panhandle, southeastern Ohio and southwestern Pennsylvania on the quiet and dry side. It's what you like to see, especially as we continue on through the overnight period. Most of the precip finally starting to wrap up, sliding and shifting its way into southwestern PA. Temperatures sitting a little warmer, but I don't expect it to warm up too, too much as we transition into the overnight period. We'll look to forecast minutes away, but for now, we'll send it back over to the news desk. Thank you, Zach. Wheeling police are investigating a breaking and entering incident that led to a shots fired incident in South Wheeling earlier this afternoon. Now, officers were called to 37th Street around 250 for a report of a man trying to break into the rear of a residence. Police were notified that another individual confronted the suspect by firing a single gunshot. The suspect fled and was last seen running south on Jacob Street. No one was injured. The suspect has been described as a clean shaven white male with light colored hair, about six foot tall, 20 to 30 years old. He was wearing a tan shirt and dark pants at the time. If you have any info, you can call police at 304-234-3664. West Virginians crossing their fingers for a little relief on high gas prices will not be getting a tax holiday after all. Governor Jim Justice had entertained the idea, but then changed his mind. With gas prices finally hitting the $5 per gallon mark in the Mountain State, I spoke to legislators about what they have to say. As high gas prices chip away at our wallets, many are turning to our legislators for a solution. At one point, Governor Jim Justice thought about suspending the state's 35.7 cents a gallon gas tax for at least one month. But when it came to calling a special session of the legislator next week, the governor said no. From the standpoint of a gas tax holiday, there's no point in you calling me. I mean, Really and truly, we know exactly now where the majority stands, and the majority says they're not interested. Governor Jim Justice calls a special session for a gas tax holiday dead and a total waste of time. He also says it would cost taxpayer money, but others disagree. 
Well, we're very disappointed because this is something uh, on a low level, on a very small level, we can do to help the people of West Virginia who need help in paying for their gasoline now that it's approaching $5 a gallon across the region. We're trying to have tax breaks for West Virginians who are struggling now during this gas crisis and it's falling on deaf ears and I find it to be sad. At the same time, Governor Justice says the Biden administration is to blame for the high gas prices, not West Virginia. But Delegate Sean Fluharty says something still needs to be done at the state level. I feel like we have a duty and obligation as legislators in the time of crisis to act and the response that we're given from the governor and from legislative leadership is that they're not going to act. They have no intention of acting at a time when the average West Virginian is struggling and needs all the help we can give them during this crisis. Flew Hardy believes the governor has the authority to do something regardless of how much support the proposal has because West Virginia is under a state of emergency. He claims the governor is just choosing not to. Governor Justice says the gas tax holiday would cost West Virginia $35 million a month and says that money would be better spent on road repair and maintenance. Looking across the mountain state tonight where we've learned that the man accused of killing Charleston police officer Cassie Johnson will not be taking the stand in his own defense. Today, Joshua Phillips' defense presented two witnesses, including a Charleston firefighter and a general surgeon, both speaking to Phillips' condition after the altercation with Officer Johnson. The state presented testimony from a surgeon who treated Johnson after the shooting. The state also showed the jury dozens of photos from the crime scene, including pieces of Johnson's damaged badge, as well as parts of her bloody uniform. The state plans to call more witnesses to the stand tomorrow. Belmont County is getting a dog park. A sheriff, Dave Lucas, is spearheading the effort. He says it will be located on Route 331 in a large field behind the current Belmont County Health Department near the walking trail. He says whenever he and his wife travel, they take their dogs to dog parks, and he decided that Belmont County needs one. He approached the county commissioners, and they officially approved it today. Uh, it'll be one big fenced area divided where you have a uh, one area for small to medium dogs, the other one from medium to large dogs. There'll be water there, there'll be pavilions there for shade, so it'll be very nice for uh, uh, owners to bring their dog to run, to exercise. He says it will open next year at no cost to the taxpayers. If anyone has any suggestions, ideas, or donations, they can call the sheriff at 740-695 7933 and leave a message. 7 News will have more on this in the near future. We have a traffic update you need to be aware of tonight. Until further notice, the Market Street Bridge located in Center Wheeling is closed after an overnight fire underneath the span caused underneath the span caused structural damage. According to Wheeling Police, around 11:30 Tuesday night, the Wheeling Fire Department was called to the bridge after a homeless encampment caught fire. The West Virginia Division of Highways will perform an inspection. Until then, drivers can use the Main Street or Chaplin Street bridges as detours. The Gypsy Cowboys took the stage tonight at Wheeling, or at Wheeling Heritage Port for another installment of Waterfront Wednesdays. Unfortunately, due to the weather, the performance had to be cut short. A large number of events are still scheduled throughout the summer. You can view the upcoming lineup for Waterfront Wednesdays along with many more events by, by visiting wheelingwv.gov slash summer events. WTRF is honoring high school seniors from around the Ohio Valley this month, and tonight's senior salute goes out to Morgan Denham from St. Clairsville High School. If you'd like to honor a high school senior in your life, just go to WTRF.com and click on Senior Salute under the Living Local tab to find out more. Once again, congratulations, Morgan. Coming up with gas prices at an all-time high, we've got the tips on how to best budget your money. Hear all about it in just a minute.
This is 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News. You might have thought that it couldn't happen, but it did. The price of gas is starting to eclipse the $5 mark in our area, and that means some tough budget decisions are going to have to be made. And while you can't change the price per gallon, financial experts say you can offset it by taking a hard look at where your money is going and cutting out the expenses that just aren't necessary. 7 News reporter Colin Roos spoke to a financial expert today about some corners you may not have realized you can cut. Meet Devante. He lives in Wheeling but drives an hour to his job near Pittsburgh every day, and gas is hitting him hard. I'm filling up about two times a week, and it's uh, running me about $100 a week. He says his 12-gallon tank used to cost him only about 60 to 80 to fill up every week, but now that expense has more than doubled, and it's making him think about working from home or even relocating. That's uh, about $200 out of my paycheck every week, so it, it takes a toll on the, on the monies. <laughs> Devontae is facing a dilemma that millions across the country are struggling with. What used to be a manageable cost to commute to the workplace is now becoming a burden that's difficult to bear. So what's the key to balancing your budget and getting from point A to point B? It lies in what's called the discretionary dollar. It's what you might call disposable income, the funds that you can afford to let go of if you need to. Naturally, you don't want to take away from you know, what you're spending on food, what you're spending on rent. Those are the most important things. And there's no easy way to say it. It's going to mean a few more nights eating in. For example, Starbucks every day, you know, or, you know, going out to eat or, you know, different things like that, going to the movies. You know. Right now, we're just hitting peak season, so don't expect things to get any easier for the summer. But he says prices will probably begin to cool down along with the weather around September, but just a little bit. When I say a little bit, I mean, if it's, you know, at that time, it's 550, maybe it gets to 450. The bottom line is that gas can't skyrocket forever but we'll have to sacrifice a little bit while we're along for the ride to make that eventual drop even better. Reporting in Wheeling, I'm Colin Roos, working for you. Coming up next, Zach has a full look at your forecast. Don't go anywhere. Storm Tracker 7 weather is presented by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. It's a nice change in pace comparative to what we were going through about three hours ago, where we had 
numerous severe thunderstorm warnings as well as ongoing tornado warnings. The good news is the severe weather threat has ended. The tornado watch even extended over into southwestern Pennsylvania has also ended uh, still lingering down into Harrison County closer to Clarksburg. But for the most part, the severe weather threat is uh, no longer eminent in our area. Even that uh, line of showers that pushed through earlier this evening of Jefferson and Hancock County continues to stay pretty robust and moving through Butler and Allegheny County. Pretty robust winds and numerous flashes of lightning again. I turn lightning off just because it does make things a little crowded, but trust me, there is plenty of lightning in association from this line of showers that's continuing to extend closer into New Kensington and through Plum. Now, in regards to what we're noticing, the swath of rain that influenced our weather early on this evening finally starting to make and meander its way through central Pennsylvania. Behind it, much to my appreciation, very clear and quiet weather as this pretty profound cold front advances through. Not a whole lot in regards to weather, so I will sleep like a baby just because it was a very long day here in the Weather Center, but wouldn't trade it for anything else uh, just to keep everyone across the Ohio Valley safe. And that's our number one priority here it's Storm Tracker 7 and of course at WTRF. In regards to temperatures, mid to upper 60s across the board, 66 at the Wheeling, Ohio County Airport, Clarksburg and Elkins at 68, Pittsburgh and a national uh, degree shy of 65 at 64. We maxed out today at 80 at the Wheeling, Ohio County Airport, a couple of degrees above average for normal highs for this time of year, even as we continue to approach mid June. Crazy enough that we're already like a week plus in record value. We finally eclipsed the triple digits in regards to records on June 8th of 100 set back in 1933 overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Mid to upper 50s is what you'll be waking up to. We're not going to warm up a whole lot even for our daytime highs tomorrow, likely down at the mid to low 70s and staying rather seasonable as we turn our attention to the end of the work week and through the weekend, although temperatures likely to start to spike as we transition into your next work week. I'm tracking near 80 degree temperatures, if not warmer. In terms of what predictor has, again, the good news is we're going to stay rather quiet as we continue on into the overnight hours. There is a few models that are trying to hint at a few pop up showers late morning in through the early afternoon hours. Most of the region staying on the dry side. We actually could filter in just a little bit of sunshine for the evening hours, but uh, predominantly dry for our afternoon and evening, although just a little cooler, but still feeling a lot more comfortable outside as dew point temperatures finally starting to relax as well. Uh, mid to low 70s for your temperatures Friday into Saturday. Rain chances will be sprinkled and scattered across the board. Finally starting to wrap up just in time for Sunday and we really start to crank up the heat back in the Ohio Valley with highs getting back into the mid to upper 80s by midweek next week. Taking a peek at your pollen report, medium to low pollen counts the next several days. Primary pollens are the oak and grasses and your friendly reminder to download our Storm Tracker 7 apps free in the Google Play and App Store. Tune into our radio partners as WKKX Watchdog Network on 1600 AM and the Valley's largest radio network, The River Network at Biggie Country 105.5. Aaliyah. Coming up next in the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone, Wheeling Post One opens their season by hosting Morgantown at I-470. Plus, we'll head back to Pittsburgh for more from Steelers minicamp and hear from the quarterback. I do, Larry, yep. All right, sounds good. I mean, I'm preparing to be the starter. I, I feel like no matter what position you're in, that's where you should. The Gold and Blue Nation Mountaineer Minute is brought to you by McClure House Hotel.
now, The Sports Zone with Scott Nolte. Hey everyone, this is the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone, American Legion Baseball, Wheeling Post 1, opening their season by hosting Morgantown Post 2 at I-470. Bottom of the third, Wheeling with a 2-1 to one lead, and they'd add on, Braden Kupski sends one back off the pitcher. Kupski will be safe at first, and Dylan Gongola will come home to score, and Wheeling takes a 3-1 to one lead. Later in the frame, Morgantown then unable to close the inning with an inning-ending double play. Michael Topher comes home to score, and Wheeling now enjoys a 4-1 lead over Morgantown. But on to the top of the fifth, we're now tied at four, and post two, well, they take the lead. We drive down the right field line. That ball's going to get kicked into the corner. A pair of runs will come home to score. Morgantown takes a 6-4 lead. Into the bottom of the sixth, post one now with the bases loaded, but a Great catch at first, ends the threat. Morgantown goes on to win 12 to four. Game was called in the bottom of the seventh inning due to the weather in the area. Well, day two of the Steelers mini camp, and of course the focus continues to be on the quarterback group. Uh, who will win the battle or replace Ben Roethlisberger is the question. In March, the Steelers signed free agent and former first round pick Mitch Trubisky to a two year deal. And then in April, they selected pick quarterback Kenny Pickett with their first round pick 20th overall. Now as OTAs and minicamp are coming to a close, where do they see themselves on the depth chart? When I'm preparing to be a starter, I, I feel like no matter what position you're in, that's what you should prepare like. So we're all pushing each other, we're all competing every day. Um, like, like you said, I wouldn't read too much into it, but um, it's, I'm, I'm getting a lot of good reps. I feel really comfortable in the offense, so I like where we're at right now, and, I'm, and I feel very confident. Mentor word, I mean, I don't think it's, like I said, it's not his job to just sit there and teach me. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to watch him. It's really my job to ask questions and to learn from him and watch how he does things and how they go about their business. So, yeah, I think there's kind of a fine line between that mentoring thing, but uh, we have a great relationship and everything's going smoothly. As Steelers offensive coordinator Matt Canada says that as of now, Trubisky is the starter. Mason Rudolph is number two, and Pickett would slot in at number three. All right, now here's Ryan Decker with our Gold and Blue Nation Mountaineer Minute. The Gold and Blue Nation Mountaineer Minute is brought to you by McClure House Hotel. For the first time since their historic run to the Final Four in 2010 with West Virginia, Kevin Jones, John Flowers, and Devin Ebanks will share the basketball court in a game this summer. Ebanks is the latest addition to this year's Best Virginia squad. This will be his first year he plays for the WVU alumni team. And even though it's been more than a decade since that run to the Final Four, you get these guys together on the basketball court and they're in sync just like old times. I feel like when I come back, we just pick up where we left off um, in terms of chemistry and our relationships, and obviously that translates onto the basketball court. And uh, for the younger guys that I didn't get a chance to play with, you know, but I obviously have a good relationship with them as well and know them, and I know their games. So, um, you know, it, it'll be an easy fit for everybody. Best Virginia's run through the basketball tournament bracket gets started at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center on July 24th with $1 million on the line. That's the latest on the Mountaineers here in Morgantown. I'm Ryan Decker. All right, Ryan, thanks so much. I'm Scott Moldy. That's the Robinson Auto Group Sports Zone.
You're watching 7 News, working for you. Welcome back to 7 News. Wheeling officials are working to improve housing here in the friendly city. Melissa Adams is Wheeling's homeless homeless liaison and since she started this position in November she has been ha she has tirelessly been searching for a solution at this week's city council meeting she filled the members in on a new idea that's popping up across the county life hubs help individuals experiencing homelessness get back on their feet Adam says Wheeling is filled with wonderful resources but this project would bring all of those organizations into one place when you're living on the street and you daily are focusing on when you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep, how you're going to you know, provide for your basic needs, it's very hard to think about long-term goals and future plans and what you can offer to society. So I believe that with having this Life Hub, giving people the opportunity to have a place where they can rest and be healthy, that we will see a significant change within our community. She says the Life Hub is opening in Pittsburgh and that would be their model for the Friendly Cities Hub. The Pittsburgh Life Hub is an estimated $20 million project, but Adam says Wheelings would most likely be less expensive and funded through donations, fundraisers, and partnerships. She says Life Hubs could really help decrease crime in the city, drug and alcohol addiction, and tidy up the appearance of Wheelings. Don't go anywhere. A final look at your overnight forecast next on 7 News at 11. This is 7 News, working for you. This is 7 News, working for you. Most of the precip finally starting to wrap up for the early morning hours of your Thursday. We should stay on the dry side. A little cooler, though. We'll put the high in the low 70s, warming up into the mid to low 70s for your Friday and Saturday. Scattered rain chances for Friday afternoon, wrapping up with spotty sprinkles early on Saturday. Then conditions really start to warm up as we progress through next week. Highs could be approaching the mid to upper 80s by midweek. Guys. Thank you, Zach. That is all the time we have tonight for 7 News at 11. Have a great night.
7 News on WTRF has been brought to you by Bordis and Bordis.